Welcome back guys. We today are going to be working on notes section 8 but we are only going to do three really short slides today and we're going to stop at the Tennessee Valley Authority. Um, to go along with the notes that we do today you have document 4, 6, and 5 in the 1930s document. Um, Th that you started the other night. So we're only doing a part of section 8 here. Uh, it's going to be a really short one today. I will keep it short and sweet. Uh, let's go to the PowerPoint to start. So we talked about the beginning of the New Deal programs in the last video where we said the goal of the New Deal was a three-parter. You had relief, which was to provide immediate relief for the problems that are right in front of our face, the really big problems. Recovery, uh, we've got to start to get the nation back on its feet. And the third R is reform. Make sure that this never happens again. Put in permanent reform to carry us through. Now, we already did the relief portion. Uh, the immediate problems we were looking at there was the banking crisis and it, employing the unemployed. And now we are going to look at the recovery portion. How do we make sure that people continue to get money, that we continue these jobs and make sure that we are fixing those problems more than just today? So the first part of this recovery is the National Recovery Act. It's also known as the NRA, but not the NRA, the National Rifle Association that you're probably thinking of. This is different than that, okay? The NRA, the National Recovery Act. So what this act was meant to do is address the crisis that we're seeing in industry. Um, during the 1920s, remember we took that hands-off approach, we let business be business and kind of build up again. We took a stance of that, that the government shouldn't really be involved because that, that restrains, it restricts business from doing as well as it should, and that created some problems. So we, are, we now have to fix those problems. Um, and the way to fix that is to try to get business to prosper again. And this National Recovery Act is going to suspend any of the antitrust laws, which might sound dangerous, but we're going to talk about that in a second. And it's going to allow the government, business, and labor to work all together to create business codes and rules for fair competition for right now and for the foreseeable future. The National Recovery Act is going to um, address the issues that unions had been going after for decades now. The working hours, the productivity, wages, union memberships, pricing of goods. We're going to try to figure out how do we get workers to work, be productive, be paid well, allow for union membership, and create good prices for the consumer to buy. So we're looking at this from all angles. The government perspective, the workers perspective, perspective, the consumer's perspective, and the business owner's perspective. And they're all going to be working together to create the best market possible. It is not going to be successful. This is a beautiful dream, but it is way too hard to get everybody together. It's too complex. There was a lack of support from all of those sides we couldn't bring together to the table, business owners, consumers, workers, and the government all at the same time. And you're going to see that profits are continuing to fall. It, it, it hasn't started to pick back up yet. On top of all of it, all of this, in 1935, the Supreme Court is going to find that the National Recovery Act is actually unconstitutional. And the reason being is that this Recovery Act was giving lawmaking powers to the president um, that went against the Constitution. They said, you know what, that's a little bit too much power. There's supposed to be a separation, and we're not supposed to have somebody who's controlling all of this industry. So we run into a little bit of problems there, and I want you to 
really note the Supreme Court getting involved here. This is, yeah, that's a star if you've ever seen one. Uh, this idea that the Supreme Court is checking what the president is doing is going to become uh, very handy and we're going to come back to it because during this time that FDR is making a new path and doing what's never been done before, the Supreme Court is going to be there saying, Watch yourself, because you may be fixing these problems, but you have to stay in line as well. You cannot do everything all by yourself. There are other branches. There are rules that still need to be followed in this time of desperation. The next piece of recovery. We touched on the farmers when we talked about the causes of the Great Depression. And if we remember, farmers were having the issue of they went from producing for the whole world, pretty much, during World War I to that sharp decline of Europe not buying our goods, only being able to produce for the United States, having way too much overproducing, which drove the price of their their goods way down. So now we have to go back to that problem. We need to fix what's happening in agriculture. And the way we recover that is through the Agricultural Adjustment Act. Um, and this is going to look very similar to the bank holiday. Uh, just hang with me and I'll make that connection clear. So the goal here is to help farmers by creating scarcity. Because remember, if we have a lot of something, if we have a surplus, the demand is going to go down and the price is going to go down. But if we have little of something, if it's scarce, the demand is going to go up and that is going to drive the price up as well. That's what we want to do with farmers. So we look at specific products and that is going to be wheat, cotton, corn, tobacco, rice, hogs, and milk. These are the products that we're trying to, to regulate uh, and, and drive the prices back up for. So what this Agricultural Adjustment Act did is it pointed to farmers and it said uh, those of you that produce these goods are going to be paid to reduce the planting of the crops and reduce the amount of livestock that you're raising. Um, that's how we create scarcity. We were paying farmers to farm less because if we told them to farm less, have less goods, uh, for a time... They, they would be going without money, even worse than they were before. So the government is choosing to pay these farmers to farm less. What this results in is an increase of food prices um, and, and it attached to the Agricultural Adjustment Act was the Soil Conservation and Domestic Allotment Act, which again paid farmers to plant crops to return nutrients to the soil. So we were turning our, our gaze to the West in the Dust Bowl and saying, how do we fix that problem as well as the problem of pricing with agricultural products? So we're, we were paying farmers to fix the soil or attempt to. Um, what, this, what this does though is it, it creates a problem again with the president taking on a lot of power and controlling uh, many aspects of life. I am not going to argue with you that it, it didn't help because it definitely did help the nation. But if we look at it carefully, um, we, we are kind of steamrolling, and that's the political cartoon that you see up there. We are kind of steamrolling um, some red tape in the government and, and kind of controlling a little bit more than, uh, than what we're used to. The last piece of recovery that we're going to do today is the Tennessee Valley Authority. And before I even go over this slide, I want to show you a quick video, uh, and then we'll come back to this slide. So I want you to check this out on the Tennessee Valley Authority.
Franklin Delano Roosevelt ran for president on a platform that promised the American people a new deal. More than a political campaign, it is a call to arms. Give me your help not to win votes alone, but to win in this crusade to restore America to its own people. The United States was several years into the Great Depression. There was mass unemployment, thousands of banks shut down, and farms all over the country were left to ruin. So when Roosevelt entered office, he immediately began an aggressive recovery campaign. Throughout the Depression, you have been patient. You have granted us wide powers. You have encouraged us with a widespread approval of our purposes. Every ounce of strength, every resource at our command, we have devoted and we are devoted to the end of justifying your confidence. We are encouraged to believe that a wise and sensible beginning has been made. During his first 100 days, Roosevelt instituted a flurry of new programs aimed at relieving the most devastated segments of the economy. Rural America was on that list, and in particular, the Tennessee Valley. The Tennessee Valley is a fair cross-section of our country. Some problems of other regions are absent here. Others are more acute than elsewhere. But in the main, the problems of the valley are the problems of America. Those problems were numerous. Heavy flooding, deforestation, land erosion, disease. They all combined to make the Tennessee Valley one of the hardest hit areas of the Great Depression. Spanning seven states and over 40,000 square miles. The Tennessee Valley was no insignificant subsection of the country, and to give it the help it so desperately needed, on May 18, 1933, President Roosevelt signed the Tennessee Valley Authority Act, creating the Tennessee Valley Authority. The TVA was among the most ambitious of the New Deal programs, with objectives that ran the gamut flood control, replanting trees, building dams, improving river navigation, modernizing farming techniques, and generating cheap electricity. In substations such as this, the Tennessee Valley Authority is pushing lines into rural communities. Thousands of counties in America have never enjoyed the benefits of electricity. Linemen from the Alabama division are bringing with them the medium that will lighten the drudgery of housework and permit wider use man's greatest natural resource, the power that lies in the might of a river. The TVA put thousands back to work and spurred wide industrial development, rewriting the social and economic circumstances of a once deeply disadvantaged area. But it didn't come without its costs. The TVA ran into some early controversies, particularly its displacement of residents for the sake of building a system of dams. And there are still debates surrounding the TVA's production and sale of electric power. But for the purposes of bringing the Tennessee Valley back from the brink, the TVA was a certain success. It set an example of recovery for a country burdened by years of hardships. So as you can see, the Tennessee Valley Authority, uh, it, it solved more than just the problem of jobs. This is going to be known as the TVA, again with the abbreviations. Uh, the Tennessee Valley uh, farming practices had had some issues. You can see in the video there was soil erosion videos or issues that uh, made the the unpredictable and massive flooding a, a real problem in the area. So not only are we providing jobs, but we are also fixing a problem. The purpose was to build a number of dams and, and we're going to use that Tennessee River that is massively unpredictable. Um, and then we're going to also take the opportunity to teach those in the Tennessee Valley uh, 
better soil practices so that they can most utilize the land. We're going to use that river for hydroelectric power and, and that is going to allow to sell, um, that is going to be allowed to be sold to the public at very low prices. So providing electricity, bringing these people together, teaching better practices, using something that was a problem before and, and making it, uh, it a tool now. Uh, the dam is going to uh, provide thousands of jobs as you saw in the video. So we're putting people back to work, we're fixing a problem, and we're making improvements to a community, to the Tennessee Valley Authority. Now before I let you go, I want to show you one more quick video. This is going to be a recap of everything we did today, and this is from John Green. Anytime you watch John Green, remember to come down to the settings here, put the playback speed at 0.75 so that we can actually understand him, which is what we've got going on here. So check out this video. And the National Industrial Recovery Act, which established the National Recovery Administration, which has lightning bolts in its claws. The NRA was designed to be government planners and business leaders working together to coordinate industry standards for production, prices, and working conditions. But that whole public-private cooperation idea wasn't much immediate help to many of the starving unemployed, so the 100 days reluctantly included the Federal Emergency Relief Administration to give welfare payments to people who were desperate. All right, let's go to the thought bubble. Roosevelt worried about people becoming dependent on relief handouts and preferred programs that created temporary jobs. One section of the NIRA created the Public Works Administration, which appropriated $33 billion to build stuff like the Triborough Bridge, so much for a balanced budget. The Civil Works Administration launched in November 1933 and eventually employed 4 million people building bridges, schools, and airports. Government intervention reached its highest point, however, in the Tennessee Valley Authority. This program built a series of dams in the Tennessee River Valley to control floods, prevent deforestation, and provide cheap electric power to people in rural counties in seven southern states. But despite all that sweet, sweet electricity, the TVA was really controversial because it put the government in direct competition with private companies. Other than the NIRA, few acts were as contentious as the Agricultural Adjustment Act. The AAA basically gave the government the power to try to raise farm prices by setting production quotas and paying farmers to plant less food. This seemed ridiculous to the hungry Americans who watched as six million pigs were slaughtered and not made into bacon. Wait, Stan. Six million pigs? But bacon is good for me. Only property-owning farmers actually saw the benefits of the AAA, so most African-American farmers who were tenants or sharecroppers continued to suffer. And the suffering was especially acute in Oklahoma, Texas, Kansas, and Colorado, where drought created the Dust Bowl. All this direct government intervention in the economy was too much for the Supreme Court. In 1936, the court struck down the AAA in the U.S. versus Butler. Earlier in the Schechter Poultry case, aka the Sick Chicken case, finally a Supreme Court case with an interesting name, the court invalidated the NIRA because its regulations, quote, delegated legislative powers to the president and attempted to regulate local businesses that did not engage in interstate commerce. Thank so what we're looking at there, again, is the Supreme Court coming in and regulating what the president is doing. They're saying, FDR, you're taking it too far. Um, not all of these programs are going to be approved by the Supreme Court. And they're, they're saying it's an overreach of power. And that's going to be a theme that we carry through to the rest of this unit. Um, Again, any questions, you let me know. I am here.